In this Photoshop tutorial, we're going to create the Elden Ring. Right, yeah, so before we hop into Photoshop, you can see I've drawn the outline for the main shapes in Illustrator. And if you'd like to skip this step, there's a link to the project files in the description. Now these shapes were all created with the line tool, the arc tool and the ellipse tool. Very basic stuff, nothing fancy here. Now the reason I started in Illustrator was because I can create these as vector shapes and I can apply brush effects to the stroke. So for example, I've selected both of these objects, go to window, down to brushes. You can see I have a brush here, click this and it applies a nice grungy texture. And there's more brush libraries that come with Illustrator by default. So there we go, this brush style gives us a nice head start. Let's close this down and we can adjust the stroke weight from the property inspector on the right. Nothing too thick, we'll keep it quite thin. And then change the color to white. Then in turn select each of these, go to edit and down to copy. Switch over to Photoshop and then go to edit and paste. Paste this in as pixels, press return and then do the same for the other object. First we'll start by selecting the background and with the paint bucket tool we'll fill the background with black. There we go, we can see our design and now let's take a moment to rename these two layers because we're going to be working on them one at a time. Next hold shift and select both layers, press command or control T to enter free transform and hold shift and scale this up. I'm then going to select the grid layer and adjust the size and position of this so it matches the original design. Okay looking good, so let's hide this layer for now and then select the symbol layer. Add a layer mask, select the brush tool and from the drop down select a nice grungy textured brush. And you might be wondering where I got all these lovely brushes from. Well that would be from today's sponsor Envato Elements. Envato Elements has an amazing library of brushes that you can download and easily install. And many of these brushes enable you to add effects like fog fire and smoke to your design in just one or two clicks. But that's not all. They also have millions of creative assets ranging from photos, illustrations, textures, icons, stock video, motion graphics, 3D, all with unlimited downloads, a commercial license for just $16.50 a month with an annual subscription. Check out the link below. So back to brushes, as you can see I've downloaded and installed loads of them. You can click the cog and select brush tip to make it easier to see which brush is which. And I'm actually going to make my window a bit bigger as well. So I'm going to start with a broken glass brush. Select the colour picker and just make sure you have black selected, that's all the way in the bottom left corner. Then use the left and right square brackets to adjust the size of your brush. And then brushing onto the mask, you can click, click, click to remove parts of the design. You can see it's still visible, but we're just grunging it up with some texture. And just remember with masking, you can press X on the keyboard to swap the foreground and background color. And you can see me using white to brush parts of the image back in. I can hold shift and click on the layer mask to disable it temporarily and see where we were before and where we are now. Next, let's add a new layer. Hover over the symbol thumbnail, hold command or control and click. This will make a selection of this layer. And I can now go to select, down to modify and select expand. I'm going to input 25, but you can change this value if you like. Select the new layer we just created. And then with white, I'm just going to brush in a bit more texture. This technique lets us add brush effects in without straying too far from the path of the symbol all because they're constrained within the selection. Let's add another new layer. We'll hide that one because it wasn't very good. From the brush drop down, let's select another brush. I'm going to go with a fire brush. And honestly, this brush is awesome. And oftentimes it's just a case of picking the right brush for the effect that you're going for. So you can see I'm still using the same selection. I'm just brushing in this fire effect on that new layer. And actually what I'm going to do now is deselect that selection 
and just brush in with this brush on its own. And when you're doing this, it's always a good idea to do different brushes on different layers because then you can edit them, you can turn them off, you can delete them, and it just gives you a lot of flexibility. You can see me adding a layer mask here to layer one. I did try to salvage this layer, but it just wasn't really adding anything. So I ended up deleting this layer in the end. There we go, turn it off, turn it on, concede defeat and delete. Ooh, spontaneous rhyme. Let's make sure we do delete that layer. And now I'm going to take a minute to repeat those same steps for the grid layer. Okay, so the design's looking good. I'm now going to select all of the layers, right click and select convert to smart object. I can now rename this Elden Ring and then go up to image, down to adjustments and select hue and saturation. Let's just move this out of the way. What I can do is check colorize, increase the saturation, drop the lightness a little bit and you can see it introduces some color. Now I can adjust the hue and make it a yellowy orange color. Next, let's right click the layer, select duplicate layer and give this a name. I'm going to call this Vivid. Change the blending mode for this new layer to Vivid Light, as you can see I forgot. Double click hue and saturation and adjust the color, make it a bit more red. Duplicate again, we'll change the name of this to Dodge and then change the blending mode to Color Dodge. Again, open up that hue and saturation adjustment layer and adjust the color. Having these three layers stacked with different blending modes and a different hue can create a really nice fire effect. And once you've got these layers and blending modes set up, it's really just a case of going into that hue and saturation adjustment layer and fine tuning it for each until you get a balance that you're happy with. Now, if you'd like to edit the actual Elden Ring itself, you can double click the smart object to go inside and make changes. Here you can see me adding a black background so I can see what I'm doing with those changes. I'll hide it here because I don't want this to come through. When you're happy, save and close the document and your changes will be updated in the main PSD. Next, select all of the layers, group them together and give the group a name. So there we go, it's looking pretty good. This next step is a bit of an optional extra. So let's add a new solid color adjustment layer. Make sure the color is set to white. Hold Alt or Option between these two layers and click. This will clip this to the Elden Ring group and change the blending mode to something of your choice. In this example, I'm going to go with Overlay. Select the mask and press Command or Control I to invert. This will hide all of the white and then using white and a brush, I can brush back in some of that white onto my design, which is going to act as some nice glowing highlights in a few select places. And I can actually double click on the color swatch of that adjustment layer and make the color a little bit more orangey yellow if I like. And if you spend a bit longer on your design, you can end up with something that looks like this. And there we go, that wraps up the video. So if you enjoyed this one, you can subscribe for more, ring the bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time.